Uh, there was a lot in there that seemed to suggest that inflation is being tamed. There were also a few elements in that report that I guess provided somewhat of a red flag there that we could see a reacceleration in some of those same measures. Well, one of the biggest red flags, of course, is the 30 percent almost drop in health care in health care insurance from a year ago. We know that's the residual of how they calculate that in the CPI, which is a bit quirky and was distorted in October of last year because they look at profits of health insurers, which plummeted as people went back to their routine visits and elective surgeries. And so it looks like there's disinflation in health insurance when that's actually not what's occurring at the moment. And that reverses course in October. And that's a big, it's over 6% of the CPI. And that's something very important to understand that that's being distorted in a way no one in the right mind thinks health insurance has gone down on mm -hmm. costs or their health costs have gone down 30% from a year ago. But the Fed knows that. They know that that's going to go back the other way. They're also watching very closely what's going on in shelter costs. It's great that they're cooling off their highs and rents are rolling over. But we're starting to see, you know, we saw the rebound in home values after they came down. And that could create a rebound effect along with higher energy prices and some more supply chain problems due to extreme weather events around the world as we get into the latter part of the year and early part of 2020. 24, which is why the Fed is hesitant to declare victory. I yeah. think they're done on rate hikes, but I think the higher for longer narrative is now what they're going to be leaning into very hard. And we've already heard that from a few uh, key members of the FOMC. I am curious, Diane, with, particularly when it comes to food and energy and, and with the caveat that we know that the Fed kind of backs that out. But for everyday folks, this is kind of their read on inflation, right? It's basically what you see at the grocery store, what you see at the gas pump. There's already concerns that energy prices are going back up. And anyone who's been at the grocery store knows prices are still elevated and they have not come down in any material way, at least not uh, based on what they're paying. Exactly. And, I, and actually, beef prices spiked because of some droughts in South America. So, you know, we're seeing some of these effects out there as well. And what's really interesting on the food budget is this is totally unique, what we've seen right now. We saw a huge surge in spending on everything from food at home to food away from home since the onset of reopening and during the pandemic. Some of that was hoarding at the initial stage of the pandemic, but we've seen a decline in inflation-adjusted spending on food since August of 21, and that's when inflation was taking off. Now, it's the longest um, downward trend on inflation, on, an, on food spending, that we've seen inflation-adjusted on record and that's a 70-year record. However, in June, it hit the 70-year trend. So if you want to know where those extra pounds came from, we know we spent a lot of money on food, both at home and away from home. But there's clearly some pushback by consumers now that we're seeing in these categories. And we already know what was going on mm -hmm. in terms of people making trade-offs on buying the store brands instead of the name brands, going to fast food instead of full-serve restaurants. But I think these are very important things. And you got to a clear point about the idea that the level of price is when wages have only just exceeded inflation, the level of prices have eroded purchasing power and they're still too high for too many.